Hey everybody, I'm Scott Weichel. You're listening to My Kind of Country right here on MKOCRadio.com. My guest tonight is one of my favorite artists to visit with. I always look forward to our conversations. In 1957, she signed with Starday Records and released her first single that year called One Step Nearer to You. Since then, she's recorded many top ten hits, plus number one duets with Leon Ashley, Farron Young, and George Jones. Today, she's still writing and going strong, recording, and in March, she'll become the member of the North American Country Music Association's Hall of Fame. It's my pleasure to welcome Margie Singleton to My Kind of Country. How are you, Margie? I'm good. It's totally my pleasure, Scott. You have been just wonderful to me and helping me to promote my my, my music and, and get back out here, you know. So I thank you very much. Well, it's always an honor, and I sure do enjoy our conversations, and I'm sure looking forward to meeting you in March, and congratulations on the award. I think it's fabulous and so well-deserved. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that makes me feel happy. You and Jeff, you and Jeff Funk have just been uh, awesome to, to uh, allow me to, to be in that, and I'm just so proud. Been telling everybody about it. I haven't been putting it on the media yet because I don't know what you want me to do, put or when. You know, don't want to preempt stuff too soon or or anything. Well, hey, you could post it all you want. Everybody's going to be hearing this interview, so we're trying to uh, let everybody okay. know that they can come down and catch the show. It's uh, Saturday, March the seventeenth, seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the Country Tonight Theater in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And you can go to nakmawordpress.com, or you can go to our website. We have a NACMA page right there, and all the ticket information and show information is listed there, including all the inductees for this year. Of course, one of those inductees is Margie Singleton. And Margie, I know you're going to be performing down there. Give me a little bit of insight of what you're going to be doing for the show. You want me to give my secrets away? Well, maybe just maybe just <laughs> one. Know, How's that? <laughs> I know what I know. What you want me to do is Waltz of the Angels. That's or right. Old records was it? Yep, I'm, I'm old record. Jeff Jeff wanted Waltz of the Angels. That was that's the first thing we he said. He said records. he said as long as long I'll as she does it. Waltz of the Angels, we're good. <laughs> I'm going to do that, and I'll do old records, and I'll probably do my new one, uh, uh, which I hope I have the full album out by the time I come in. It's been slow coming this time. I've had it recorded since the latter part of uh, 17, 2017, but my guy is uh, kind of dragging his feet a little bit. Not really. He's just wanting to get it just right, and uh, uh, I've thrown him a few curves here and there telling him what I want won't change and stuff so uh the the uh, uh my new gospel song uh uh Jesus is my pusher is doing quite well kind of worldwide in South Africa and uh, the Caribbean I've had interviews over there and the guys have just been wonderful I was I was uh pretty uh well known in South Africa in the 50s and 60s. Uh, this uh, uh, young man called me from there and wanted to do an interview, and I said, well, yeah. So I don't know where you want me to go with my talking, if you want to ask me questions, and I'll answer if you just want me to, to blabber on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know me, Margie. I just like to have a conversation. We just got to see where it goes. And yes, we, uh, we never seem to run out of things to talk about, so I think we're good. No, we don't, do we? <laughs> we just, we just, uh, just uh, meld it into a, a good conversation, convoca- conversationalist. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I love about it. Well, we love Jesus as my pusher. We've been getting a lot of requests for it on our Sunday gospel Wonder. show, and we've been playing it every week. And you're right, absolutely. So many listeners overseas are just absolutely loving the loving the song. Now, you re- you originally recorded the song some years ago. Is that right? Mm-hmm. I recorded it, uh, Lord, in the 60s. Uh, and, and it's been out. It's on YouTube, the old version of it, and, and it, everybody loved it. And but I just never did. I didn't have harmony on it, and I didn't have. Uh, there was something lacking in the in the words to me, so I wrote this last verse to it. You know, drugs are so prevalent back then; they are more prevalent today. And I just put a new spin on the language of the last verse. 
if you listen to it, it's more like the, well, you just have to hear it to see, and I, I hope people like it. It's touched a lot of people who have, you know, just about all of us are touched some way by friends, family, or someone we know by drugs, and, and um, it's just, uh, it's touched a lot of people to know that yeah. there is is salvation out there, that it can be fixed. Absolutely. Jesus. Absolutely. There's a great video. You can go to YouTube and see that. And uh, if you follow Margie on uh, Facebook and Reverb Nation, you can watch it there as well. And her website is MargieSingletonMusic.com. And uh, she has albums available there, including her two latest ones, uh, which is called uh, On the Other Side of Life, which is a fabulous gospel record that she put out just a couple years ago. And also a uh, an album called Country Music with Soul that has a lot of her uh, big hits from over the years on Ashley Records and Mercury. And there is also a fabulous uh, collection that Bear Family put out called Jukebox Pearls, uh, Margie Singleton Pledging My Love. And that has 30 songs, uh, the very best of her uh, early music on there. It's, uh, in my opinion, a must-have. I That's a valuable part of my collection. We certainly play a lot of those songs on, this, on the show. And, you know, Margie, looking back, uh, you've had a stellar career. My goodness, you know, you're, you're in the seven decades now of, of recording, performing, writing, producing. Uh, you sang back up with the Jordanaires. I thought that was a really cool thing, too. Yeah, we 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 uh, we took part of the Jordanaires and and the lady, the high soprano voice Millie Kirkham, and myself, and we we named the group the Mary Melody Singers. I got your <laughs> I got your uh, allergy there. I caught it from you. Over the I'm phone. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we we uh, we sang on a whole lot of things. I. I uh, I'm the girl singing on the uh, Wait on the Corner. You know the Leroy Van Dyke. Oh yeah, walk um, on by. Walk on by, yeah. No kidding, that's you. That's cool. I didn't know that. That's cool. You didn't. No. Everybody that's cool. got to come in on that line, and so I came in by myself. They liked it and kept it. <clears throat> there you go. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> and then Leroy. Uh, I, I wrote an answer to walk on by. I'll walk on by, and, and um, Leroy sang on my record. If you ever hear that, that's him singing with me. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. I love that. <laughs> you know, I uh, some of my favorite uh, uh, songs that you've done are some of the great duets. Uh, of course, the George Jones album. Um, it's uh, it's a classic, it's, and uh, it's I, incredible. <laughs> It's yeah. uh, country music, mm. <clears throat> country music at its very best, and duets country style is the name of the album, and that's available. Uh, Bear Family also put out a real nice box set on George Jones. That's and, the one uh, I was talking about. Yeah, and it's just awesome. Absolutely, yeah. and uh, tell me a little I, bit. Tell me a little bit about working with George Jones. Well, you know, George and I never did any shows together. We really? were just put together in the studio. And uh, it was fun. We were both, George had had a few hits under his belt, nothing like the George Jones that came to be. But he was he was doing real well. And, uh, of course, I was just kind of starting out. And uh, they put us together in the studio, and it was just magic. And we had a good, fun time, but a serious time. You know, we, we knew it was business. But, but we enjoyed it. If you could listen to the banter between George and I, it, it, it's real. You know, it was spontaneous. Uh, no written, no, nothing written down to do or say. We just did it. That's wow. what we did back then. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, you know, it's it's pretty amazing that you guys uh, you guys blended so well together, and your phrasing was was great. And I know that's I remember Tammy Wynette talking about that one time. It was real hard to follow George because he would change his phrasing every time he'd do mm -hmm. a take. And so you guys you guys did so well together. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, it it was pretty close a couple of times. You know, it, it'd be off a little bit, but unless you're listening close to it, you don't tell it. <laughs> but we sang on one mic. Oh, did you? Uh, back then, oh yeah, back then you sang on, the, the singers were on a mic, the vocalist was on a mic, and the musician, I mean a, a track, was on a track, and the uh, musicians were on a track. There was a 
three track, two and three track tapes that we cut on back then. And if you messed up, you had to start all over again from scratch. <laughs> wow. Well, of course, Waltz of the Angels is on that album. There's a couple uh, songs that were unreleased uh, that are on the box set too, which is really cool. Right. But, um, tell me about how Waltz of the Angels came about. Was that? Did you guys choose any of the songs for this album, or was it? Uh, were they chosen? I think we all did. I think uh, Shelby and I and and, and and George, we all, you know, agreed on what we wanted to do. I loved Wynn Stewart's stuff. Oh, yeah. And I, I loved the song Waltz of the Angels, and I I think I was the one that wanted to do it because I did love it. But, and of course, I wrote uh, two of the songs on there. It, uh, it Actually, it's one of my first records, I Want to Be Where You're Going to Be Tonight. Yeah. And, and we did that. And uh, I uh, <laughs> wrote, uh, uh, let's see, I wrote, I did 14 sides with him. You were asking about the uh, the two that came out on Bear that wasn't on the, the country music with Soul. Yeah. The, let me tell you a story about that. I was driving along with my guitar player and band leader, uh, Lonnie Spiker, coming from an event one night. And <clears throat> we uh, he flipped the YouTube on to come over his car radio, you know. And... Here comes uh, one by one. Mm -hmm. And he said, Miss Margie, that's you. I said, no, it's not. I said, it just may sound like me, but it's not me. He said, that's you and George, Miss Margie. I said, okay, let me look on my phone and see who it is. And it was George and Margie. <laughs> and I, you know what? I did not have any inkling. I don't remember recording it. Is that right? And, uh, Right. That and one excuse is good as another. That's a great song. I'm, I'm actually surprised that that didn't get put on the album. I thought that was a, a very strong... Me too. Yeah. It but is. You wonder sometimes I, how they choose this, choose songs, you know, and they, they take some off, and you scratch your head on that sometimes, but it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, I guess so, but that that's a true story. <clears throat> of course, it came back to me in bits and pieces after I got to... To listen to, and, and one by one too is an incredible, beautiful. Uh, the the harmony on it is so pretty. It, it's just a little too short. They cut they cut songs short back then. Yeah, yeah. You know, radio stations didn't want it over two minutes or so. You know, maybe two and a half minutes. Yep. And uh, so that's how that happened. <laughs> and of course, one by one was a, a big uh, Red Foley Kitty Wells hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. you guys, you guys really sure, that's did. That's why we did it. Oh, I'm sure you uh, guys really did. Uh, you kind of sweetened it up, I guess, for lack of a better term. It really, uh, your voices sounded so much more pure on that. Nothing against the original cut, but uh, I really oh, liked it. Oh no, your no, version. it was great. Yeah, it was wonderful. That's why we cut it. You know, because <laughs> it's such a good song. <clears throat> well, you know, one of my favorite songs, and I, I don't, I don't think it was uh, a big hit, but it, uh, it was, it was certainly a chart hit. Um, it was called Honky Tonk Happy with Fair and Young. That is, I think that's my favorite yeah. duet you guys did together. That's a fun song. Yeah, he just say it like this: Honk a tonk, honk a tonk. Yep. <laughs> honk a tonk happy. <laughs> honk a tonk, honky tonk happy. I think of Fair and a lot. <laughs> he uh, played a big part in my life, and uh, I, I miss him being on this earth. You know. Uh, we read uh, Keeping Up With The Joneses was such a big record for us. And um, everybody wants to know why we didn't have a follow-up. Well, during the time that uh, we had that out was uh, my marriage broke up with Shelby Singleton. And uh, our next record was supposed to be uh, Mr. Peters that Roy Drusky and Priscilla Mitchell had out. Oh, yeah. And... Um, so naturally, I was kicked off the label, and Joe uh, Farron stayed on Mercury, and uh, I went elsewhere to United Artists, and then later on Monument, and then when Leon and I married, we formed Ashley Records, and from then everything was on Ashley. 
Well, he had a lot of great songs on Ashley Records, as did Leon. Uh, of course, Laura was his big hit, and uh, you guys uh, wrote music together, recorded together, toured together, and uh, had such a wonderful career together. It's uh, an amazing body of work. I was, <clears throat> this morning, I was kind of melancholy. I've been trying to stay off of my, I have a right knee that just yesterday kind of went out on me, and so I've been trying to stay off of it. So I was looking on, uh, somebody put a song of mine uh, uh, on uh, on YouTube that I hadn't heard in a long time. And uh, uh, what would I do if you were gone? Oh, yeah. Just what would I do is the name of it. And it's such beautiful harmony on it, not bragging on myself. I don't know, if, uh, you know, it, I just love harmony. And the song was saying, what would I do if you were gone? And I, I just got a little choked up. Now I know what I would do if he was gone, you know? <laughs> and it kind of knocked me for a loop. So, But anyway, it, it, you you heard that song, have you? What I would see, I do if you were gone? I oh, sure have. Oh, it's... Well, it, uh, I hadn't heard it in a long time, and somebody put it on YouTube, and I flipped to it, and... It's like hearing it all over again for the first time. Well, that's beautiful. Well, I know that Leon would be very pleased uh, that you've carried on and you're uh, writing and recording some wonderful music. And, uh, you've, you know, you've won some stellar awards, including uh, the uh, Josie Award, that uh, Independent Country Music Hall of Fame. Yeah, that, that was awesome, yeah. That's great. And, of course, the NACMA Well, award. I hope, hope Leon would be proud. You know, we... He, I was in the business when he came in, I don't know if I've told you, but he was a, a radio station owner at that time, and he he had the maximum. Did you know there was a maximum that an individual could own stations with seven? Is that he right? Couldn't have, yeah. So he owned the seven stations, and he loved to write and sing, but not professionally. He did it as a hobby, and... He wanted to know, did I want to stay in the business? If so, that he would sell the stations and get out and start, you know, doing doing it. And the first record he put out was a was Laura. But anyway, sometimes I think, well, did we do right? But uh, it, it turns out that uh, I think we did. And and he knew that that's what I wanted to do. And even though I almost died when he did, I didn't think I could ever get on stage again, much less record, but God brought me back with that album that you mentioned on the other side of life, which I wrote about Leon, the, the song, the title song about his passing and the hopes of seeing him again, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, things happen for a reason, and I think that uh, you've got a lot of uh, wonderful music that needs to be heard, and I know you've got a lot of fans out there that are absolutely so happy that you're uh, recording again, and including me. And I certainly, wow. uh, I wouldn't have been able to, to uh, get to know you and have the, have wonderful conversations with you. And I, I can't wait to meet you. I'm really looking forward to that. I, there's... Oh, me too. We tried. We almost missed each other a couple of times. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> we almost missed. I mean, we did miss. <laughs> we almost missed each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. It's going to be a fun time. I am too. Well, you're going to be performing. And uh, also Jeannie Kendall will be there, Dick Dameron, Joyce Smith. Um, Rex Allen Jr. is going to be receiving the Legend yeah. Award, and uh, it's somebody else took uh, the Blackland Farmer guy to. Uh... Who am I missing? <laughs> Jeff's going to kill me. I go. I don't have my list so in front I of me. He, maybe he's not going to be on there. I can't ever think of my buddy's name. He used to be on the Hayride with me, the Louisiana Hayride. Uh, Anyway, maybe I don't think he is. As a matter of fact, <laughs> just strike that, strike that, folks. Well, I think I, I think I got them all anyway. Uh, Riley Madison yeah, you, too. She's a she's a wonderful singer songwriter. She's going to be there this year, right. and uh, it's going to be a fantastic year. I just can't uh, can't wait to be I'm there. Just, it's a nice thing too. Forward to it. I'm, Absolutely. Uh, I'm been rehearsing songs. Mm -hmm. I got a show here here Sunday afternoon at a. a, a uh, Richard L. White, the radio station in Gallatin here, mm -hmm. he has a Country 101, he calls it, show once a month, and I'm starring on that this time, and the 
guys came overnight before last, and we rehearsed and had the best time. I love to get together and pick and sing. You know, that's my, that's where I, where I am my, in my little shell of heaven, you know. And we had a good time and looking forward. This is a very personal show. It's, uh, it's by invitation only. And uh, it, it, it's going to be a real nice thing. And I'm looking forward to coming up there and just getting... I haven't been up the, in the mountains forever, so I'm looking forward to that. Probably be snowing, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not, yeah. Well, you've uh, you've gone over to uh, Mac Wiseman's, too, and done some jamming with him, too, right? Yes. Oh, yes, I love it. He has that once a month, too. Mac is the love of my life musically. I just love him to death. We used to... <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. We used to be uh, on the uh, in Wheeling, the Wheeling Jamboree, mm -hmm. and I had I had told people this before, but they'd look at me like I was crazy. Leon <laughs> at one time bought the Wheeling Jamboree. Really? After we married, yeah. And he didn't stay. We didn't keep it long, but I, and I so I quit mentioning it. And Mac, the other day, we were reminiscing about being on the jamboree together in old times. And he said, yeah, that was back when Leon bought the jamboree. I jumped up and I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he, he I think a, you yeah. have validated my, my saying that, you know. Yeah. But uh, it got to be too much for us going back and forth every week to Wheeling. So sure. we were uh, had to... Uh, had Laura at that time and was hidden with several things and the business part of it needed more attention so he just sold it back but it was a uh, it was a great time that's great that's great so now you have a, a gentleman that's going to come and uh, play guitar and perform with you at the show too right yes his name is Joe Rucker and he is an awesome talent Scott he's a uh, uh, he's never hit big, but he's been around. He's worked with, with a lot of Charlie Lubin, Lubin and he, he was uh, uh, Jack Green. He, he worked with Jack Green and and uh, uh, just a lot of artists, but he's had records on his own. And I won. I want you to pay attention to and, and maybe play it. His grandfather passed away a few years ago, and he was going to Florida to the funeral. And he wrote this song on the way down there. It's called The Best Day of My Life. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the most incredible songs that I've ever heard. And uh, it's on YouTube. Listen to it. And you'll see why I'm bringing... bringing. He's, he's one of my adopted sons. <laughs> I have adopted so many kiddos in this business <laughs> that have been there for me. If it hadn't been for the love of of my guys and girls that just have been there for me and, and just accepted me and they're here for me for whatever. And, uh, uh, of course, uh, Lonnie Spiker, I would like to bring, but I won't be able to do that. He, he, he used to be front man for, for Leon and I for 20 years. Sure. And that's the only reason I went back was because Lonnie, and Leon loved each other, and I knew that Leon knew that he was there holding me up. So um, he's a good guy, too, if you ever can play Lonnie Spike. Oh, you bet. I appreciate it. Wonderful musician. You bet he is. Absolutely. Well, Margie, you, you've uh, shared a few of the songs uh, from your gospel album with me that I've been able to listen to, and uh, including Jesus is My Pusher. Tell me a little more about the project and uh, some of the songs you've got on this album. Well, I've got a song called uh, "I'm Leaving Tracks," and and it I wrote all the songs. Uh, it says, "I'm leaving tracks on your mind, so you won't forget me, putting a lock on your heart, so you never love again. I'm gonna be the love of your life now and ever after." Put a lock on your heart and leaving tracks on your mind. I love <laughs> so it. that's one of the songs. I think that may be the title of the country album, Leaving Tracks. Wonderful. I love it. And uh, there's another one called There's Not Enough Hours. And 
a 24-hour day. <clears throat> Amen to and, that. Um, it's, oh, that's true, isn't it? Yeah, it's all, true, all yes. There's not enough hours. Are you going to put uh, Lost in Cyberspace on there? You know, I might. <laughs> I love that I'm song. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that. I might do that. <laughs> I love that song. What a great phrase, you know, for those of us that are a little bit older, you know, we're, we're struggling with the uh, the Internet. I've learned an awful lot doing this radio show. And, you know, my daughter, she's, you know, she'll be 12 years older next month, and she can come right Use up. Use your brain. Yeah, I mean, she could do all this stuff. You know, she's got the smartphone, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> so I, I'm with you. With being lost in cyberspace, I get there myself. Too. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. I hadn't even, I, I've got stuff cut. Well, but how lost in cyberspace. I was sitting there trying to do this computer, and I cannot do it. I just can't can't capture it. And I, I, just the idea popped in my head. I'm just lost in cyberspace. I'll never make it. <laughs> and so I told Joe about it. He, said, he loved the idea. And we couldn't come up with all those catchphrases. He's 40, so he's too old for all that Snapchat and all that yeah. stuff. So, uh, uh, and hash, hashtags. And <laughs> so this little girl that worked at WSM, Sam Washford, and uh, we called her and said, do you want to come in on and help us write this song? So she did, and she came up with some of the catchphrases, you know, in it, where I went into to, uh to Waffle House in order to hashtag smother, cover, and chunk <laughs> <laughs> instead of hash browns. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's great. What a world we live in these days, you know. But <laughs> yes. but it's great. You know, it, but, it's connected me to a lot of wonderful artists like yourself, and uh, it's certainly allowing me to bring uh, those wonderful music to a, a worldwide audience, and I'm I'm very lucky and, yeah. and proud of that fact. So, well, I'm your, looking. Your show's doing so well, and I'm so proud of you. Well, it's purely because I get artists like you on the show. I mean, it's uh, I, wow. it's, it's a it's well, a no brainer when I can get Margie Singleton on my kind of country. You can't beat that. You, you know? know what? I'm just so humbled by by your um, just by your words, just by you even want me. You know, I just. Like I said, I'm no, I'm not one of the big uh, names, and you know, you are to me. Everybody knows who she is. Well, that 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 means a lot to me. Those uh, those those people who do love me and love my music, that means more to me than than just in, just about anything. And you were talking a while ago, and I cut you off about the awards, uh, the Atlanta Country Music Hall of Fame I had in back in September. Uh, did you know that? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think you were going to say that, and I cut you off on something, my big mouth. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always breaking in. <clears throat> I tell my little manager, Linda Denny, that <clears throat> if she's talking to somebody and I'm bad about butting in, because my 82-year-old brain, it's got it there for one minute, <laughs> Next minute, it's gone if I don't get it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, I do these interviews to, to have you talk, not me, so that's that's quite all right. Oh, <laughs> we need to talk to each other, is it? <laughs> That's great. Well, we're looking forward to your new music. And again, folks, visit MargieSingletonMusic.com and uh, pick up her music. And I hope you'll come and see us at the North American Country Music Association's International yes. Hall of Fame show, Saturday, March 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the Country Tonight Theater in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And we'll have all the information on our Facebook page. Also on our website, there is a page for NACMA there, and you can read all about the uh, the inductees and also get ticket information there and come and see Margie Singleton and all these wonderful artists. And Margie, as always, it's a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much for taking my, time. My total pleasure, and I love you, and I'm looking forward to meeting you and your wife and daughter. Me too. And, and just hanging out a little while. Uh, you're going to be down there. We're going, uh, I guess we're going Friday and be there for Saturday. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Yep, we'll be there for sure. Okay. Yeah, I can't wait to see you all. That'll be fantastic. Well, Margie, I'm going to play a bunch of your music right now. I want to play Jesus is My Pusher and let folks hear that. And, of course, tune into our Sunday okay. Gospel show. You'll hear that. We've been playing it every week. And I'm going to play right. some of your duets with Farron and some with George and some Leon Ashley and some of your solo stuff. So we're just going to play a whole bunch of Margie Singleton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds great to 
and May. Thank you so much. I uh, love you, and I'll see you in March, God willing. That's St. Patty's Day. I know it. We better. I got to remember to wear green, so I don't want to get pinched. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, <laughs> me too. Okay. Well, God bless you, and 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 uh, I'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, Margie. Margie Singleton on My Kind of Country. Listen to the, some of this great music, folks, as we continue right here on MKOCRadio.com. <laughs> 